everyone. Welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. This is part of my college success series on how to study anatomy without losing your sanity. Um, as you probably know, if you're a student of anatomy, anatomy is all about naming structure. It's all about memorizing names. It can be extremely um, dry uh, and difficult to get all of those strange names in your head, uh, mainly because the names themselves are very foreign. Um, most anatomical names uh, come from Greek and Latin. Uh, some of them are actually descriptive, if you happen to know Greek or Latin. Um, other names are eponyms. Um, if you look at a lot of names in anatomy, they're extremely de uh, descriptive, like I said, and it's really worth your while to get uh, a book of Greek and Latin roots. Um, I have some online, uh, but a lot of these words that you're going to see here, that you're going to see them over and over again. So the more familiar you are with the terms, um, the easier it's going to be in the long run. Eponyms are terms that are named for a person, and uh, unfortunately there's no way of getting around it. you just got to memorize them. So here are some general tips that I have on how to get all these structures and all of their names in your head. Uh, the first thing, of course, is to stay organized. Um, if you have a study guide, that is your lifeline. Um, you want to make copies of it so you can color and um, make notes all over them. You want to partition out all the things that you need to learn over the amount of time that you have before you're tested. And every day you want to add new terms, new structures to your brain, study those, and also review the previous ones that you've already covered. I call this oh yeah in your notes. So you look at something, you look at the list, and you say, okay, I know that, and oh yeah, and close your eyes and see. Can you visualize the structure in your head? Um, if you can, uh, then you're doing pretty well. Um, the idea here is that the brain learns new things by taking them and connecting them to information that you already know. So that's the key with all of these uh, techniques that I'm going to share with you today. You have to make connections if you are going to learn new uh, and often very foreign material. So some of the basic techniques that you've already probably tried um, include the use of color. I love the anatomy coloring books. Um, drawing and writing not only the words but actually sketching the parts, especially if you're a visual learner, that can be really helpful. The value of repetition for memorization, everybody knows, right? You got flashcards, um, they have flashcards that are um, online, they have them that you can carry on your mobile devices, uh, whatever works for you, but you want to use a variety of different types of material because otherwise your brain's going to get bored, it can be very numbing if you use only one type of material. So get yourself lots and lots of different versions of the same thing, so you look at them in lots of different ways, from different angles, um, and that's what's going to make them stick. Um, I'm going to talk about storytelling and etymology when I do uh, the little demo here. Um, I want to mention mnemonics really quick. Mnemonics are extremely powerful. They are memorization tools. There's a little bit of history here. There was actually a Greek goddess of memory. That's where this term comes from. And uh, basically, they're fun. They're often uh, sexual. Uh, they sometimes make no sense. Um, I actually love this one. It's to help you learn the bones um, in the wrist, the carpal bones. Um, sacred lovers try positions that they can't handle, right? So there's stupid little um, sometimes rhymes or statements that help you to memorize things that, quite frankly, otherwise may not have any meaning for you. So here we go. I'm going to use some other techniques, etymology and storytelling, as we approach bones of the skull. So the first thing that you want to do, so here's my study guide here, part of my study guide for bones of the skull. And uh, don't panic, okay? Don't panic. Um, start with what you already know. You're going to have terms and structures that you may already be familiar with, so make the easy connections first. Okay, most people know frontal. At least it's a word that you're familiar with, and of course it's the front of the skull, so that's not too difficult. A lot of people know the temporal bones um, because you, most people can touch their temples if you ask them to. Um, those are the temporal bones. A lot of folks know nasal right, referring to the nose. And you may know the mandible, in, meaning the lower jaw. So start with those. That's pretty cool, right? So you've already got some terms that you know. Now you want to approach the ones that aren't so familiar. Um, let's start with the parietal bone. So let's say I don't know anything about the parietal bone and I've never seen this word before. Um, the first thing that I want to do is see if it means something. So here's some references where you can go and look up the meaning of words. And if you look up parietal, you'll see where it comes from. It comes from the Latin referring to walls. So 
Basically, if you look back at the skull and you think about a wall, well, that kind of makes sense. The parietal bone is an enormous bone, uh, two actually, <laughs> that um, make up a huge percentage of the cranial vault. So the connection here is tell a story, something that you can remember. So the parietal bones surround the brain and protect it just like walls. So if you can attach something which you already know, that is a wall, to something that's new, that's the parietal bone, your brain kind of has a place to put that information. So that's kind of cool. Let's look at another one. Here's the occipital bone. So the occipital bone, by the way, you notice I'm using colors. I color code my study guide to match the colors that the textbook uses for each of these bones. So here's the occipital bone. I look it up and it means back of the skull. Okay, well, that's not super, super helpful. But you might notice that the root of the word is also used uh, in a lot of terms relating to vision, like ocular. So it turns out that the occipital lobe of the brain is responsible for vision. Okay, well that's something that I know something about. So now I can relate occipital bone to vision. And now look, the professor has two features on the occipital bone that I also have to know. I don't know what those are either, so I want to look at my handy dandy uh, list of Greek and Latin terms um, to see what those guys mean. A condyle is a knob at the end of a bone. Um, it, it reminds me a lot of knuckles. Um, so I have an image of knuckles that I, I can associate now with a condyle. Foramen means hole, and it comes from the Latin meaning to pierce. Actually, that's still used in Italian as well, forare. The more languages you know, by the way, the better um, anatomy gets. Now that's kind of a gross picture, but you're actually going to remember it. So foramen means hole. Magnum is a word you probably already know. It means big or great. Most people associate magnum with a handgun from Smith and Wesson. So now I've got the occipital condyles here. Those look like knuckles, right? And I've got the foramen magnum, which is a big hole right there in the middle. So what you want to do is put it all together and tell yourself a story. These are the connections that are going to help you to remember. The occipital bone is at the back of the head and protects the occipital lobe of the brain which controls vision. So I've got that all attached there in my brain. I've got the occipital condyles. I think about knuckles when I see that term. I've got these two knuckles here and then I've got a huge hole, the foramen, which I can shoot with a magnum. Now I admit that that's a strange story but what you've done is you've taken terms which were completely unfamiliar and you've put them together in a story of pieces which are familiar, albeit strange. A lot of people like to have one single image to put all these things together. I often look for a single image that can tie my story together because that I can remember fairly quickly. And I found this one. Um, this is really strange but real. This is called I Give Up. It's a real Bluetooth headset for the iPhone. Now, it's stupid, right? I mean, everybody would admit that, unless you just bought one, in which case I apologize. But you will remember it, and that's the key, right? You have to excite your brain when you are trying to remember things, and the brain remembers information when it's attached to emotional experiences. Boy, the media and advertisers, they sure know that, so why not use it for your studies? One of the best ways to excite your brain, of course, is to be social, study with friends. It eases the pain, and it allows you to share the stories that you've come up with, so you don't have to come up with all of them on your own. Share them with friends. Um, I wish you good luck. And as always, I thank you for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks so much.